Hello. So today uh, I'm going away to do a car review on the Skoda Octavia Mark IV. Uh, 71 plate, so it is the later version, the latest model, generation of it, Mark IV Octavia. Octavia's came in four Marks. Uh, well actually it's interesting, it started off as a Mark I, then had a Mark II, then had a Mark II facelift, which is the model I actually own. Uh, I can show you that in contrast later. Then they brought out a Mark III, then a Mark III facelift, uh, and then the latest, the Mark IV. So the Mark I was 1996 to 2004. The Mark II, there was an overlap because some of the latest Mark I's overlapped when the sales of the earliest Mark II's. And the Mark II was 2004 to 2009. The Mark II facelift, the Mark IIA, was 2009 to 2013. Then the Mark III was 2013 to 2016, all this is approximate. Then the Mark IIA, Mark III facelift, was 2016 to 2020. And the 2020 Mark IV, fourth generation, is this model here. I've done a uh, review on my channel um, uh, earlier on, just a couple of videos back, it was the diesel, it was a VRS model. Well, this one's the 1.4, it's a uh, electric, uh, it's a petrol electric, it's, got, it's a petrol hybrid, so I've never drove that before, so it'll be quite interesting. This time I've got my camera mount, so I can film myself driving it as well, I'll tell you how it, what I think of it, you know, while I'm driving, you know, the experiences of it and that. So, I couldn't do that the last time, uh, I didn't have a camera mount, but this time I came prepared, so... I'll show you a bit around it first, I'll show you around the car, then I'll show you under the bonnet, and then I'll show you inside it, and then I'll go and drive it. But I've got to be quick because there's only so much time here. So, so that's uh, nearly brand new. It's second hand, obviously, because it's, the year is 2023. This car model is a 71 plate, which is late 2021 or early 2022. So it's basically about a year old. So I'll move the car out further as well, we'll get a better view of the back for you. This is just a just a very sort of quick look around at the moment, but we'll get a better in-depth view at the moment. Now I think this is the charging point. I've never done an electric car before. It is actually the charging point because it is a hybrid. It's a petrol hybrid. So you could actually charge the battery as well. I'll probably run on pure battery power for a wee bit before the petrol engine kicks in. Uh, the petrol filler caps on the Mark IV are just the same as where I've always been you push that in well you do when you could get the door open but unless I've never opened this one before maybe there's a, a means in that I'll have to come back to that one I might only open when you've got the ignition key I've not got that yet and just wait on the, the guy's given us the uh, well, I've given, given my licence before I could test drive it like he's got to check the licence so I'm just waiting but once I get the key I'll be able to you know open up the bonnet and show you in there as well so this is just like a wee demo of the car moving before I get in it. I'll show you the car uh, once you get out, you know, an in-depth look inside it and around it. So it's in the silent at the moment because it's um, working on pure electric. <coughs> so it's very helpful, the staff's very, very friendly, very helpful here. The car salesman car salesman that's driving it, he's been here for uh, 40 years in this Skoda Octavia dealership, uh, the Thompsons. Oh, it was very, very good of them to let me to do this. So you might be able to hear the artificial sound effect from the car when it's in electric, because it's silent. Uh, there's like a... it's very faint, but you could maybe hear the artificial sound. It's good of uh, the uh, Alan, Alan that was it. It was very, very good of him to do that for me. So I've, I mean, I've, uh, I've been left alone with this car, I've got this now to do my video on inside, outside, test drive. Uh, so, 
I'll open up the, I'll go around again on the exterior then I'll open up the bonnet and show you under here and I'll have a look underneath as well, promise they would do that because I like getting on my hands and knees and then I look underneath too so I'll show you as well So it's the hybrid. They've got the parking sensors. This is uh, standard fit. The um, now I still haven't figured out how to open that yet, but because usually you just press it and it opens. It might be then you need to have the ignition on or something. I'm not 100% sure yet, but I'll, uh, I'm sure I'll figure it out. I'll get a few pictures as well. Well, it's. So it's got the disc brakes all round. It's uh, solid discs on the rear. Uh, it'll be discs on the front and I think it's vented, double disc vented on the front. The VRS one had red calipers and that was a more performance but this is the um, hybrid. I'm not sure what quite the trim level is on this one yet but uh, I'll show you the boot well in here. Well, the Skoda Octavias are um, renowned for having a massive boot for a car of its class. It's a cat category. It's in the segment D size. Uh, sorry, segment C cat cat category segment C class for the size of car. So A is micro money, B is money, C is medium and D is large. But although the Octavia is actually big enough to pass for a large Class D, that's why I've got one, because I'm getting a big car for the a Class Down. So it's the biggest in its class, really. The Octavia has come in uh, hatchback form or estate form only. Now the VRS had the electric boot when you press the button, it would come down itself. On this one, it's the manual one, just like my own car. You just pull that down if you can't reach, but I can reach no bar. And it just uh, goes down it manually. So I'm going to show you the bonnet uh, under the bonnet next. So to get the bonnet open on the Mark IV Octavia's, uh, it was like it's in the VRS as well, top of the range. It's this lever in the passenger side or the near side. Just pull that back like you always do. Uh, the Catch is under here. It's got struts for holding the, the lid up, so you don't have the original, you know, the old fashioned stage. Now, it is a hybrid, so that's a high voltage side. That's all the high voltage well, orange wires are high voltage, so you don't touch those. The, the general layout under the bonnet is the same sort of principle as the, all the Octavia's, certainly on mine anyway. The engine sits transversely mounted, front wheel drive, transmission at the near side, underneath all this. Uh, this would be the air induction system, so it's air, comes in through the front, ram air, through this sort of accumulator into the trunk and the piping. This is the filter box, the air filter box, it will get cleaned, the air will get cleaned. Then it'll come out, down into the turbo, where it gets compressed, then it'll come out the turbo, uh, and then into an intercooler, probably a water to or a water to air intercooler. And then after that, there's the charge air's cool to go into the engine to get uh, to mix in with the petrol that's injected in. Then it gets ignited with these ignition coils, the ignition spark plugs. The uh, four cylinder, there's four ignition coils for each spark plug, and then it's you know ignite the compressed mixture which pushes the piston down. The exhaust gases will come out through the outlet manifold, the exhaust manifold, around the turbo, spill up the turbo to compress. Well, the, you've got the compressor side for the exhaust side and then you've got the shaft going through it which is sealed, which, which is uh, going to be driving the the inlet side. So the air that gets 
something all you get compressed and then and through the intercooler to be cooled and then the process goes on so the general layout of the engines the same the expansion tanks there but the uh, hyd hydraulic brakes and if it were a manual I'm sure it would share the same hydraulic fluid as the brakes but this being automatic it doesn't have a clutch so it's uh, I'm not 100% sure if it's a series hybrid or a parallel hybrid. I haven't researched enough into it yet, but that's just give me an idea anyway of what's under the, the bonnet. No, I don't think that's meant to be a so I'll just remove that. It was just something that was lying in there, but I'll put that in the car and tell the, the uh, the guy once and finished but obviously that's just mislaid so that's no problem I'll set that in there for now um, so I've showed you the boot I'll let you hear what it sounds like putting the bonnet down so you get an idea of the quality build quality that's we'll get a picture of this first before I do that So that's why it's and actually taking still photos at the same time as recording. I could do it on this phone, which is uh, very useful. Right, before I close the bonnet, I'll just go through a couple of other things. That'll be the relay box, that'll be the engine module, that'll be all part of the modules for the electric motor. That's a hybrid section. Screen wash, that'll be the coolant for the hybrid section. That's your just your conventional coolant for the engine. Clutch and brake, ah, well, no clutch and brake in this case, it would just be brake fluid, hydraulic brake fluid. That's your oil top up, your oil dipstick. Uh, and as you know, as it's a petrol engine, it's got spark plugs, that's the coil pack, so on each spark plug. Air box for the air induction, the air inlet for the engine. And that'll be the trunk, and it'll go down to an oil water cooler, or uh, oil to air intercooler. So the coolant will cool the air down for the charger to uh, bring the temperature down, which denses the air to go into the engine so you get more oxygen per unit of air. Right, I'll let you hear this closing, just to give you an idea what it sounds like. Quite solid, nice and well built. So I'm going to now go into the interior of the car and start showing you the inside. So excuse my bag, it's just my bag here. I'll uh, get myself in. I've got the keys on me but I haven't switched it on yet. So I'm just going to so it sounds like it has got the um, dials, the digital display dials rather. Some of this, the lower spec models have the conventional dials where they're actually the real dials. On this it's a display dial, like that of the VRS. The, so this would be slightly higher spec than the, some of the other ones. It's got the usual cup holders, um, automatic gearbox, big... Um, Armrests. Uh, it's all touch screen on here. I'm keeping an eye on the time at the same time because I don't want to be too late and go on. I have to quickly go around this. Uh, the electric mirrors are here. It's got heated, just right, just left. Normal electric windows. Your controls, you could do the back as well. The sun visors are pretty much standard, it's just the usual. Uh, that's pretty much the same old drill. Touch button lights as well, so they touch that for the interior lights. It's not coming on at the moment for some reason, I don't know. Oh, that's maybe because it's. I'm not, I'm not quite sure at all the engine outs on this yet. Uh, anyway, I do. Uh, on the other VRS, it was a case of touch them and sure it's the same on us and just no. Yeah, I've not got it done right. The interior mirror is the manual version for the dim dip. On the VRS, it was the uh, crystals. In fact, my car, the Mark 2A, has got crystals. You press a button and it crystallises. So when there's car lights behind, so you don't get rear dazzled, you would do that, you know, to tilt it away for you. But on the other one, like even mine's got it, and the VRS has got crystals uh, that dim the light so it anti dazzles. Like, so it doesn't dazzle you, basically. But this model doesn't have it for some reason. Uh, but it does have the digital um, display for the 
speedometer like set the, the electronic handbrake and I'll put the light on here and show you the pedals it's sort of it's an automatic uh, so uh, there's loads of room in here by the way I've put the seat back you can adjust the steering wheel as well with this now in six foot that's a bit average and a large build as well and there's tons of room in this car so it gives you an idea just how much there is now I can't do it at the same time because I'm filming but that does come out yeah, there we go and it moves out and then to lock it you just push that down but yeah that's the lever for so to adjust the steering column you down it goes then you adjust the rake the height and you can move it inwards or you can push it back down in towards the, the dashboard or you can pull it out from the dashboard depending on what you want and then once you've adjusted it right you just put that lever to it clicks up uh, the steering uh, the oh, yeah steering wheel is really nice it's got these nice dials on them it's got Octavia badge it's a horn that's the nice finish on the door give you a sound quality of what it sounds like Sounds solid, it is. It's got the usual handles. Uh, oh, there's well, there's the lights there. They go out after a while. Um, and there's some in the back as well, and sure. The stereo system, again, I haven't really got a lot of time to go through all this. There's a huge menu on it, but you'd have to go to the manual for that. Uh, glove compartment, usual drill. Uh, I'll show you the seats and that. I'll just move that out the road. So it's the, um, it's not the VRS bucket type seats, it's are the performance seats, it's, this is like the, the standard seats, they're really comfortable. Try and get rid of that glare, I'm going to get some glare on the lens for you, but it's because it's sun reflecting, but uh, yeah, and six foot and six foot tall and there's all this headroom still left here. Uh, and a large build and there's lots of room I could comfortably sit here on long distance it's like why I've got Octavia it's a big car for its class size it's the biggest in its class the boots are actually bigger than cars in the class above the segment D which is the large size for the UK anyway the boots bigger than some of them so it's really big car big value for the, the uh, money it's practical and I like practical cars I like cars that are tidy safe and look they look tidy and they're practical and the score octavia is that and it's a uh, mark 4 one this one and then continues that that theme i'm gonna climb out the octavia for a minute and show you at the back oh. so i'll let you hear the door sounds like it's closing back seats i'll show you those There for a minute. Right. Um, I'll get a couple of pictures of that as well. Isn't it? So I'm going to be to climb into the back. Now I've got the driver's seat right back as I usually do because I've got size 12 feet. And I need lots of leg room and foot room when I'm driving, so I'll have the seat right back. And with the seat right back, I'm sitting right behind it, and there's tons of room. Tons of room, in fact, I'll show you. So as I say, that's seat right back, and then I measure it six foot tall, and you can see the room that's left. I've got a size 12 feet, and there's still, if I'll put the light on to show you that, there's still lots of room for them to be tucked in there. Um, show you the headroom, still lots of headroom. Uh, there's lots of width room. You get three adults, in, well, you get, you get two large adults in the back and one smaller adult in the centre. Um, I mean, if you got three average adults in there, it'd be maybe like, you know, the width of the Octavia is of similar width to the Class C cars anyway. It's more on the length. The boot is massive. The width is wide enough. It's like this, it's spacious. The way they've shaped the doors and the interior, there's lots of space in it, as you could, as you could see. So... Very comfortable. So we're gonna get some pictures of that as well. Put the flash on and get that off. Yeah. That's the interior light. I don't know what type I put that on at the moment because I'm gonna have to get test driving it before the place closes. So 
that's just a quick sort of look around the back. Um, try and get rid of that for a moment just to show you the seats. And it's got the big door pockets as well, usual for score activities. There's lots of places to store things. Got the two auxiliary uh, USB ports, the usual vents in the back. Um, I'll be air conditioned and not I'm sure it'll be air conned. There'll be air conditioning in here for sure. Um, comes as standard note, doesn't it? So, yeah, so it's a very, very comfortable car. Headvests, they will adjust in the being as well. Right, I'm going to get setting up the camera and I'll do the test drive. Right, you hear the doors. It shuts really sound. Oh, I forgot to do the under body look. So I'll have a look underneath for you. I did promise I would do that. Because I'm just as curious myself. What I forget, unfortunately, it's sitting on the. Oh, gosh, I'm right on the ground and my, my knees are hurting. <laughs> but it's, it looks like it's got independent uh, rear suspension, what you like. Silencers at the back, as you can see. I'm not as fit as I used to be. This is really quite sore on my knees because I'm right on the ground. So I'll have a look under the side. <coughs> Oh my gosh, I'm so getting older. I'm not as fit as I used to be. That's the underside, it's best I could show you for now. Then I'll have a look under the front. Oh my god, this is. Ah! Oh jeez, this is difficult. So it's got the under trays for the en engine as well. Uh, oh, God, it used to be a lot fitter than this. So, there you go. Oh. Oh. Believe it or not, I was much fitter than this. <laughs> so, I've had a bit of a look underneath, so I'm going to get in and drive it now. Right, I think that's... Uh, that's not too bad. I've tried to get it as lined up as best I can. I've no got really a lot of time. There is a lot of sun at the moment, so uh, no, I've never. I'm not familiar with these uh, keyless ignitions automatically. I've never drove a hybrid, so I believe you would just leave the keys either in your pocket or just down in the, the centre bit. Then make sure it's in neutral. Press the foot brake, then press start. Sounds like it's powering up. Yep, that's a good sign. Should have maybe showed you that. Oh, damn, I'll show you that. I ought to take this out again now. I'll we'll get the radio off. The uh, I've never used them before, so I'm assuming that... Uh, I'll get this off. Yeah. So that's the uh, speedometer. I'm going to have to get that off. Right, so what I've done is I hit media. That must bring the source up. Uh, to get it off, I just hit that. So I'm assuming it's going to stay off, I hope. Um, source, radio, right. so, I've hit media, I don't know quite how I get uh, the stuff off, but I've left it on there at the moment, my media, uh, oh, see I don't want to get into this, I, oh, I don't know what all this is about. I've not rehearsed on it, I've not uh, researched it. I just want it to be, keep quiet anyway. Right, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, so there, there's the dash. So what I've done is I've pressed the stop start. That's where the ignition key would be. I've just got the keys in there. In fact, what I'll do is I'll keep them in my pocket so that I don't uh, work myself. Oh, uh, I'll just keep them on me. That's the gear shift. So it's in your own. I press the brake pedal to get it and then press start. Then this all lit up. So I'll get this back in its holder and I'll get driving it then. Right. See that it's on the view, yeah, kind of. Right, that'll do. So I'm, as I say, I'm just literally winging it. I didn't adjust the seat height because I like the seat to to go higher. So I've got the weight off the seat and I just leave it up, moving the lever up. Uh, that's, uh, mirrors, I'll adjust them with the the joysticks. Just slide right, slide left. 
adjust it in just the, the way I want them to be done and move it back to there get the rear view mirror adjusted and give these white the, the uh, wipers because there's a lot of sun and it's uh, you know it's right in my eyes so I clean the wipers I clean the windscreen right now I'm gonna get the heating down it's got plus 29 and getting that right down because it's blooming melting in here get down to about 20 I'm just pressing the touch thing when the open the window a bit well, well, let's go. I've been saying that for ages. Right, put on the brake and I've got it on drive. That's it in drive. It's an electric cam brake, so I've pressed. That's it. So we're off. Now we'll let you hear it. That's the fake sound. I don't really know all my ways around Perth, so I just kind of hope I don't get lost. <laughs> well, I can't Perth a wee bit, but. Right. Um, So the central locking comes on, I heard that clicking on, that seems to be the uh, standard thing. I've done that in the VRS as well. Uh, indicator stock's all in the same kind of position. Wow, that's smooth. It's torquey. Electric motors are torquey, because you get instant torque on an electric motor. So the pedal engine will kick in at some point, no doubt, but once the range runs out, or when it needs performance, but it's um, really comfortable. Now, I don't care about either be just the surf. Got it to be eight and a half. I think that must be the seems pretty cool anyway. I've no, I've no looked into that. But I'd be there for too long. I've only got limited time. The place shuts at five, and it's half twenty-five past four. So. Uh, I'll have to open up the taps on this a bit, you know, get a bit of the uh, speed up. So I'm, we're going to try and get onto the motorway. Uh, I think the best way to do that, though, probably the Brox the Magna. Where is it? Uh, I'll go through Perth, I'll go in the Alban with. I'll see if we can get along, I'll figure out something and see I'll just make the route up as I go along. I don't know Perth like the back of my hand at all, so I'm just, uh, I'm just winging it really. I don't want to be sitting in traffic, I want to get this up to some speed now. If I can get on the motorway then I'll be able to do it. The display, I can't even touch that now because I'm driving, so I just have to tell you what in, uh, how I felt was feeling. Now it's still in electric mode at the moment. Um, 70, was it a 71 plate, isn't it? So that's <coughs> late 2021 or early 2022. Uh, the Skoda range, I believe, are um, they start off at one litre engines in petrol, then it's a 1.4, I think this is 1.5, 1.4 1.5 hybrid. Um, then you go up to uh, there's a 1.4 hybrid then, the 1.5 TSI is just the normal petrol and then it's diesel, I think after that, you've got 2 litre diesel and you've got a 2 litre petrol which are both in the, offered in the VRS models, you might have to research into that but this one anyway is the hybrid petrol uh, and I think it's a 1.4 petrol engine linked up with an electric motor I think it may be, it might be series, it might be a parallel hybrid, I'm not quite sure yet actually it must be a series hybrid because I don't hear the transmission meaning it's just driving an electric motor to the wheels so the engine's purely a generator um, meaning it's a series series hybrid I would figure it anyway a parallel hybrid is where it blends in mechanical use it's got like an electric motor running in parallel with the the clutch or something so you're still getting mechanical drive as well as electric drive uh, just say, yeah, I'm just making the route up as I go along. I don't know. 
Oh, uh, smooth like. But the steering's really light, really. As you'd expect, it's a 71 plate. I don't know what the mileage is yet. I can't really go through the menu because there's a big menu telling you. I'm sure this one's got lane assist as well because on the VRS, when I was overtaking, well, when I was moving back in, after overtaking, I felt the wheel doing that a little bit just to try, try and correct you and get back into the, the, uh, the lane. <clears throat> but when you put the indicator on in cross lanes, it doesn't do that. So. Yeah, I'm gonna go by Broxton. I don't want to get lost. I don't want to be late getting back. Um, so far, it's still been in uh, Legend Range. I was hoping to get one done in Dundee because I know the I know Dundee obviously very well when I'm in but in Perth, I know Perth, but not as well as Dundee. So kind of figured out. But that's the only place it does it today. It's the one that I hit. Because I've been phoning it around day, and this is the only one that had a car available for this model that I wanted to uh, to do a review on, basically. And as I say, it's very good of Alan to let me, uh, the car salesman, it was very good of him to to let me do all this. Uh, that was very much much appreciated. Uh, Alan's been there for 40 years at Skoda Thompson's branch in Perth. Uh, Skoda dealer in Perth, he's been there for 40 years. Yeah, that was that was that was Alan. It was driving. You saw the outside shots of this car when it was being driven. I was wanting to get that for years to see that. Uh, and he was very kind enough to do that, and um, he's got me on the insurance and put a trade plate there as well. So I'm legally allowed to do what I'm doing here for years to show you the inside of the Mark IV Octavia, fourth generation, 1.5, ah, uh, 1.4 hybrid, I believe. It's either a 1.4 or a 1.5, I think it's a 1.4 petrol. It's a four cylinder anyway. So that'll be turbo in it cooled, the usual. Um, this has got a house start as well, by the way, just because I would have rolled back normally. If I didn't have that. Oh, this is going well. I can't wait to get this on the motor, I'm like. <laughs> I'm just taking it easy, you know, within the speed limit, just accelerating up responsibly and safely, just to. You know, I want to hear the petrol engine kicking in because up to now I haven't heard it. It's just been running purely in electric at the moment, which is great for town drive. I mean, it doesn't cost for the, uh, you know, petrol. Like. No, can I get up this way or uh, I don't know what lane I should. Damn, uh, should it be in this lane or the other one? I want to go, dunk, I want to go by the, the Perth Motor Mile and go by the Inveralbin Industrial setting up the M90. I want to go that way so I can get up to speed and I think I need to go uh, right at the... No that right, no the next right but the in after that, I think. Um, ah yes, it's uh, 89. Ah, oh, right, I can't work good now. Ah, yeah. Ah, that's, that's what you're in it. Oh, this thing's really hard to milk. Oh, this is that's great. Oh, I like that. I fall in love with it. I'm definitely getting Octavia's like and staying with them. The one I've got, I'll show you in contrast what the Mar 2 is like uh, to compare. I've done it on my other VRS uh, review that was done at the uh, Dundee branch. Oh, bloody lights, I hate them. Traffic lights, I made it through anyway. Uh, yeah, the VRS diesel. As I say, I couldn't do the, this because I didn't have that with me. The, the, I didn't hear that phone or the... I need to, if I'm doing like this, I need, it has to be done on that phone. Because that's the only that does it. And I need to hear that holder as well, so I can hold the camera there and the insert. But the guy, the salesman in the other one, uh, he actually just left me to it. So it was very good of him. But I didn't have anybody to hold the camera. So, But this time I've come prepared. <coughs> but you should have heard the sound of the VRS diesel. Oh, it sounded absolutely great exhaust sound like that. It's just a bit of the that we 
way that I can relate to it here. Yeah. The, when you put the foot down, because I went up the A90 to uh, Lord Forgan and back, and the exhaust note for a diesel, eh? <laughs> so I'm in. So I'm up to 30, no bother. Still on electric, by the way, this. Uh, this is the Perth Motor Mile, isn't it? Pretty sure it is coming up for the. Ah, this is the Perth Motor Mile. It's after the sunlight. So in other words, you get a lot of car sales rooms on each side uh, for a mile. Hence the name, Perth Motor Mile. It's just up a wee bit actually, it's just up here a wee bit, because this comes out to the, the Inverhelmet Circle. So. I'll show you a bit more of the, the view of the bonnet if you want. No, it has regenerative bacon because I just felt it doing a. You know, the electric motor then becomes a generator and it puts charge back into the battery. So this is the Perth Motor Mile, by the way, that we're driving along. There's used car sales, and there's all sorts of car stuff. There's stuff on the right further down as well. So I'm up to 40, no bother. Oh, there's the petrol engine kicking in. You might need to put headphones on to hear it because you can very faintly hear it. You might not hear it on your phone, but if you put headphones on, you'll hear the petrol engine kicking in. That's in now. No, it felt a bit odd, did it? Oh. Actually, it's going down gears. That's how odd. Maybe it is. You see, I don't know, maybe it is a parallel hybrid. Because when it was going down the gears there, if it's going down gears, it's got to be gears, and if it's gears, then it's going to be a parallel hybrid. It can't be a series hybrid. So when it's running in pure electric, then uh, uh, the actual flywheel or clutch will be doing the drive into the transmission. So there would be just the transmission being driven by the electric motor. But now I can hear the petrol engine. I can feel it as well. It's kicked in because I actually pressed hard on the accelerator there just so I could get it to kick in, and uh, I could actually uh, hear it. So therefore, the petrol engine's driving mechanically to the wheels. You're getting the mechanical drive to the front wheels via the petrol engine, or by the petrol engine rather, via the transmission. And the uh, uh, electric motor is driving the transmission, which drives the wheels. But when you're a parallel, you get a blend, so you can have a mixture of... The computer, the ECU computer does all that. That does all the, the blending and all the rest of it. So I'm on, coming up for the A90, so I'll spin turn on left. Um, that'll be able to hopefully get up to speed. But if, I can certainly hear it kicking down the gears, you know, as it's an automatic, meaning it's mechanically, a mechanical drive to the front wheels. So therefore it isn't a series parallel, a series hybrid, it, it is a parallel hybrid. That's my standard of it anyway, and I'm quite sure and right on that. I've driven buses that were series hybrids, meaning the engine was just solely a generator. Um, right, let's so get this. Right, so that's just up to the uh, national speed limit. I wasn't speeding. I feel the wheel try to pull me in a bit because it's got the lane assist. Um, because it didn't indicate to come back in, it's not a recognised moving the highway code. It's, it's, rec it's advisable you do it like, but it's not recognised. You always indicate if you're pulling out, but if you're moving back in, you don't need to. So when I didn't have the indicator on, and I felt the wheel keeping this corrected in the lane because it's got lane assist. But when I put the indicator on and pull out, you don't feel that because it's um, it, you don't it knows that you're intentionally moving out of the lane. So there's a lot of things on the dash there. Uh, I can see the petal thing, so I better know. There's all, I'm not looking at that because I'm not familiar with all the stuff there. There's loads of stuff on the dash. I can't show you, obviously, because the phone's fixed there. Um, but uh, I mean, 
1.4 engine that's been torquing. But then the electric motor is torquing. The electric motors, you get instant torque from the moment you put power to it because it's just developed power right there and then that's within its um, parameters. A petrol engine needs the RPMs to build up the horsepower basically. Um, <coughs> once the engine gets going, it's developing power. But torque is power is torque times speed. That's the formula for it. The electric motor you get instant torque and you feel it. It powers the uh, speed. I might actually go a bit further. No, I better not. I get carried away. I don't want to do that. Because I get that way. I sort of like didn't want to come out of it. I went up to the batteries. <laughs> no, I was very good of them to uh, let me do this. Uh, so I'm coming back into the Perth city. I would have liked to try it up there too, but. Nah, no, nah, I better not. I better not push my luck. Nah, nah, I won't do that. I'll just. Uh, I'll actually better find my way back because I'm not 100% sure. But this, by the way, I can feel it regenerating. Oh, jeez, it isn't half. See, I'm just coming off the, the off the brake. I'm just coming off the accelerator pedal, and the car is retarding. It's braking. That is because the electric motor is acting as a generator. So the kinetic energy of the car, freewheeling, if you like, is being turned back into electrical power, which is going into the battery to keep the battery charged. So when you press the accelerator again, the battery has got that charge in there to be converted by the electric motor into mechanical energy. So instead of just in your conventional car, if you press the brake pedal, it's friction. So it's changing the kinetic energy of the car, the mass times speed, into heat energy because it's rubbing against the disc or the brake shoes or whatever. Um, and that will just waste energy because it's burning it in the heat. It's converting, it, converting the energy into heat. But with the regenerative baking, it's actually converting the energy into useful electricity to go back in the battery. Now I see a red light on at the, the yeah, zero. So that's it. And yeah, that must be the fuel tank. No, it's not. It's actually the battery. There's a uh, zero red at the bottom. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not running out of fuel. I just. If you see anything that's red on the dash, it's usually there to get your attention. But it doesn't seem dead at the end. It's just. Trying to give you the charge. Um, so I better not go much further. Better uh, was. Well, anyway. Um, Let's get back, yeah. So, um, uh, how do I get back now? I'm gonna aim a sat enough. Uh, ah, I think what I'll better do is go back to the town. I could get my bearings for you there, so I'll just go straight on and then I'll uh, head up by the there's a prison, I might head up there on Edinburgh Road by the South Inch. Uh, I'll find the way back, don't worry. So, I'll, what I'll do actually is I'll maybe get some pictures of the car away from the showroom if I could. But no, what I'll do is I'll find the showroom first. I'll get back onto the road going from Oyeri. And if I can find a nice spot, I'll maybe get some pictures of the, the outside of the car for you. Uh, no, you've already seen it, like, but just in a better location. So that's. Your engine kicking in there. <laughs> oh, I'd buy this car, like. <laughs> Hear that? So, I think below a certain speed, when it's running in pure electric, you get the artificial sound. And that's a fair to put that electronic handbrake on in case it doesn't come off. Because <laughs> uh, I know for more you, <laughs> I think you just press it down there. Uh, I'll, I'll just keep your foot on the brake. Uh, I don't know where I get stuck. No, I'll just try it. So it feels really odd that because I've just got it on now and the foot pedal goes down a wee bit. But, uh, I'll make sure I'll practice getting it off. Oh, yeah. 
fucking danger is that one? Oh, no, there we go. I shot myself. I thought I was staying on there. I thought I was not. I was just practicing to get it off so we're not stuck in traffic, blocking the hell road, eh? I can't wait, I'm just going to keep it off, keep my foot on the brake. <laughs> and as I say, I've never, I've, this is the second time I've driven a car with an electronic handbrake. Well, maybe tell a lie, there was one time I was at the work, they asked us to, to do a delivery or something that had an electronic handbrake, but that was years ago. I think it was, this would be the third time I think I've driven it. No familiar, in, in old school, in old school, I prefer the, the ratchet, the handbrake, the actual cable handbrake, because you can feel it going on, it's just, it's a bit sophisticated and all that stuff, in old school, by the way, I really am. Uh, I'm 48 this year, and I've always been a sort of old school person, I like old, older cars, you know, I get sentimental to them, and I like the traditional way of things, because you become a master of it. The more you get something, the more you do something, the better you become. And uh, things like brakes, instinctively, you should know them like that. And the handbrakes there all the time. They shouldn't change these things, you should keep them as standard. Especially brakes and important stuff like that. So, oh, right, coming back to the swimming bass. Oh, all right, I got a rough idea about it, I'm not right. Uh, yeah, I'm going straight on here, am I? I could have got in there, but I'm going to go straight on and then back to Squat Street or South Street, isn't it? And then I'll turn right up, up that way, it's up that way somewhere. I'll find it anyway. But uh, that's just, I could just drive this. So I'd swap and <laughs> take this car back. Please. No, I love my car, I get sentimental to them as well. So I'll use mine to have false to bits and then now that I've learned a lot about the Skoda Octavia I'm confident I'll get another one in the future. That's what I'm doing and learning and with the potential buying one and potential oh, I'm a customer because I'm learning about uh, what the car's about so I can consider it for future car. Um, so. Last time I was, was it an old other car? Well, my previous cars were Astros, Vauxhall Astros and that. I had a Ford Escort. The big car that I had before that was a, an MG Montego. That was 22 years, that was back in 2001. Before, my very first car when I passed my tests in 1995, first of March actually, first time, I'll brag. But it was old school, you just, the exams, were well, tests were easy, the examiner would sit there, you had like high record questions, fire through them. Past that was it, but no, jeez, see now you can't do. It's all, well, I don't know, <laughs> totally different story now. It's far too much more to it, more complicated. But my very first car was bought on the twenty seventh of March, nineteen ninety five. It was a Mark Three Ford Escort. I was a banger, but uh, I wouldn't be moving this way, doing it, because I'm going to be turning right this one way road. So. Part there, did he? Terrific. Anyway, um, yeah, I had an MG Montego 2 litre, uh, and it was a Nitro 1991 model. I was a banger as well, but I took the exhaust off it. It was something oh, brilliant, like, yeah, something loud, isn't it? Lots of power. Just take the silencers right off. It was a straight pipe. Well, from the, basically just a down pipe. It would be the equivalent of a straight pipe. A straight pipe is where it comes from the engine right hole, the tail with no silencers go. Silencer delete, cart delete. It didn't, there's no cart like converter on that. But the uh, Montego was just this instead of down pipe now, it was a raw engine sound. <laughs> uh, but the first good car after that was a Mark II Astra. Uh, but that was a, an unlucky car, I got broken into twice. In fact, what saved it is the exhaust being off it. I took the exhaust off it. it sounded loud as anything. And thieves broke into it, started up, switched off immediately and ran a mile because of the noise it made. So that saved the car because on the following week, I noticed when I was going away on a holiday in it, there was a Mark II Astro just like mine at the side of the road that was burned out. And that could have been mine. But because the exhaust was due to go back on just a couple of days later, it saved it. Excuse my language. Blooming lights. Um, traffic lights. Uh, I hate them. I like them when they're green. <laughs> I hate them when they're red. But, um, yeah, the Mark II Astro was uh, an unlucky car because then 
the third time it got somebody drove right into the back of it and wrote it off. And that was coming out of Perth, by the way. So that was the stuff that slipped, was coming off the motorway and they drove right in the back of it and wrote the car off. So that was the end of the Mark II Astro. Then I got an Escort Mark V and then uh, I won't go to all that then. Oh, I went in after I was Mark III, Mark IV Astro and then I got this Skoda Octavia. Then I got the... Car I've got now. That car is coming down, that one there is, that one now is driving in front of me is a Skoda Superb. Superb, that's the bigger version, that's up from the Skoda Octavia. The Skoda range go from the... Skoda Sitago, I guess, and the mini one. Then you've got the Skoda Fabia, which is like a small car. And then you've got the Skoda Scala. That's where the place is called, or a pit, or a pit, or a rapid, that's right. That was a, a medium sized car. And then the Skoda Octavia is also in the Class C segment, but it's in the, it's a large, it's the largest in the class of the Class C cars. So the, Sk the Skoda Scala is like your average sized medium car if you like in class C. The Octavia is the largest car in class C. And then you've got the Skoda Superb, which was that one you just saw there, which is the class D segment. Oh, we come up, we've got pictures here. Before I forget. I could, this is alright here. I oh, know it's a plate park. No, 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 I'll go past the plate park. Northern that, I'll have it just past the play park, I'll have it about here, which is northern that in the background. I'll have it, that's fine there. But I'll go further, can I come in? Good, I'll go further. So, well away from there. Hey, give me some pictures of it. No, I wasn't going to pose, <laughs> pose next to the car. Right, so, park. And I'll just switch it off. I've got the keys in my pocket, but in fact, I can show you this because I'm stopped. You see, I can touch that phone because I'm stopped driving now. 27 minutes. What? Is that how long I've been doing this for? 27. That guy will be putting a search bar out for me. I'll watch my time. I think I was wrong about that red one. So I, I've not got time to go through all that. I haven't even researched in there. I'm just showing you roughly what it's about. Right, I'm going to get a quick uh, get some pictures, then I'm going to have to get going. So, first thing I'll do is turn it off. So, keys are in my pocket, by the way. Just get that. It's, it powers down, and that's what it looks like. Up you get that wee thing as well, look. So it's done 33,605 miles, I believe, and I don't know what all the other stuff's about, but you need to study the handbook. The handbook, I, it's, ah, it's in there, but I've not got time to go through it. So, right, let's get this done, otherwise there'll be a helicopter and search party. I'll have a tracker in it, I'm sure, but... Better not take any length of time. So the phone's actually getting quite hot, so I'm going to have to watch it doesn't overheat. Otherwise, I'll be losing the rest of my video. So I'll uh, just get a few angles of the car here. It's a lovely looking car. I've liked it. I like the Skoda Octavia for its shape and its practicality. Well, its practicality, its safety, its shape, its safety, its practicality, its economics, and its shape. To put it in order: safety first, affordability next, practicality, and it looks nice. Although if it didn't, if something looked really ridiculous, I wouldn't buy it. But this looks really nice. Uh, you know, it does me. That's my cup of tea. I like a saloon-looking car. So I'm going to get a picture I'm in the middle of the road, so I have to be quick. Picture there, I've got a nice sunset on it actually. I'll have to get a selfie. <laughs> I've got a pose in front of it. I've got all corners photoed, I've got a dead on front view of it as well. So that's what I'm doing, I'm photographing and filming at the same time because I could do it on this phone. I've got myself a selfie. <laughs> Picture that. I don't know. I'm just pressing it. So hopefully I'll be up. Now that's a lovely park, South Inch at Perth, by the way. Uh, I've picked a lucky day for it, weather wise. Right, so it's time to. Going a view from here. 
I'll get another view this side. Right. Right, that'll do. Ah, I don't know, I'll, just, I'll open another file up. Right, so I'll get back in the car and we'll get back to the showroom. I've got to figure it all get back because I didn't want to be taking the piss and, you know, getting late or anything like that. It's very good of the guy to let me do this. Uh, I hope I've got that nut blocking in there. Maybe if I put that there. Would that be better? Uh, would it make any difference? That will there, but it's about the car, so I'm having it in the car. And I'll show you inside the car, you get to see the seat. Right, keys are in the pocket. So I've got them in my jeans pocket. And to start it with a keyless ignition, foot on the foot brake, press it, make sure it's in neutral. Press the start. You hear it powering up, the display comes up, the speed up come up. Press, please start the vehicle again. Last pressure detected. I'll get no. Ready. Ah, right, okay. Right, well, it's started now anyway. So there's loads of sensors and electronic stuff. Uh, but let's get this back, we don't want to be running to fuel or nothing. Right. So into drive, I'll put the brake into drive. Handbrake off, so it's, it's good to go. Right. Right, so we're off. No left, no, no, we're we'll, 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 uh, Make sure I've got all my bits and pieces with me. It's maybe a bit squint now, but I shouldn't have been messing about with it driving like. You should never touch that at all when you're driving. It doesn't matter if it's uh, recording, it's still a phone device, or any device here. You've got to be parked properly, officially parked. You know, handbrake on, parked at the side of the road responsibly properly before you can touch that. If you touch it, even if you're at traffic lights, you shouldn't touch that at all. Um, so, eh, otherwise you'll end up in that Perth prison that, <laughs> that's what I'm looking for because the showroom's right opposite the Perth prison uh, so uh, then I'd uh, be looking at this car through the bars of your prison <laughs> what's that? Corporate. I just saw something interesting there but Ah, oh, what have I lost? I can't go back in this car. I've, I do it my end car, I've not got time, I've got to get back. So I can't get sidetracked. I've got to get back. Otherwise, the guy will think I'm just taking the piss. Uh, no doing that. He's been really helpful to me to... He's been really good letting me make a video of this. It's very good of them. Uh, so on, on behalf of... Uh, I'd like to thank Skoda for, for letting me do this. Uh, Alan, thank you very much for letting me drive your your, your uh, demonstration car like this and letting me do a video, that's, I much appreciate that. Um, doing it for my viewers, I hope my viewers really like this, if they're motorists, even if you're not a motorist, you just want to know what the car model's like, and then showing you on my channel. So, I'm interested, I want to know, genuinely want to learn about this model and then for future. So, when my car's actually falling to bits to the point where the car be driven and the car, you know, not worth the pair, then I'll be wanting to stick with the Skoda family and knowing learning early about it. I know what it feels like, I can have that in my mind when I consider the next car. Uh, and yeah, I've been I'm impressed. Um, there's obviously a lot of things to take in it, you know, the warranties, the finance, and the insurance, and practicalities, and uh, this is the time of, you know, circumstances and that, you know. God almighty, that's one habit you don't want to do, by the way. When you're driving an automatic car, don't press the pedal thinking it's a clutch. Because I've done that before once. I pressed the foot brake. Just instinctively with my left foot thinking there was a clutch when I was going to a junction. You know, I put it in the neutral. And I went, get shot right forward because it was, you know, I never made that mistake again. Well, <laughs> so if you're driving automatic, because I've been driving manual cars all, all the time. Uh, not familiar with automatics as much, but that's one habit you don't want to do is mistake that foot brake. Because when you come up to the junction, we have manual, you just autopilot, you just press your clutch, not get in the neutral when you're about to stop. But if you do it with your automatic, thinking your, your brake pedals and clutch, it will stop dead. Because you just you need to touch the brakes and it will be on its nose. The clutch pedal you're pressing right in. Uh, all electric cars are automatic. This 
being an electric hybrid is uh, naturally going to be automatic. Oh no, I Oh no, there it is. Yeah, I passed that coming in. Unless the test goes in fast, I'll show you. So that's where I've got to be going. You can see the prison on the right, that built. Now, you might know with the angle of the camera, but. Uh, it's on the right, Perth Prison's on the right there, and the Skoda dealer is just right across the road for you. It's, God, it's five o'clock. I know it's just a bit away for you. I've not had my phone ring, so. Listen to the accelerating. Like. That's better than you know, so the range will be down on the battery. So. The ECU will probably blend in how much the. How much there's to be mechanical percentage of the drive and battery electric percentage, it will blend in with the ECU. There's a, a, a dealer on the left, going to be glad to see me get back. Because they'll be wanting to get him as well, you know, they'll be wanting to get back home, they don't want to be waiting on the late comers. See it going down the gear there? But oh, you know. I'll reverse it into the space that I took it while we. It goes into that space here, not it's a bit hard to reverse it in this angle. Damn, because it's yeah, I'll get it in there. It's just gonna be a bit of a a bit of a chore, but I'll get it. So I'll reverse, just hit reverse, and uh, you don't have to touch the accelerator when it's reversing. The idle, not the idle speed, does it? It's the electric motor but imitates an idle speed doing it. Because uh, with a torque converter, you get torque. Converter slip and all that stuff. Skoda's so have the DSG. And I'm sure this has got park. Yep, it's got parking sensors, you can hear it beep. Aye, that'll do. I no, dare not go any further. <laughs> so, on a neutral. Handbrake on. And when you put the handbrake on on this electronic handbrake, you can feel the brake pedal going down. I noticed that with the VRS as well. The lights, uh, in fact, I'll leave it idling. Either. I can't get that habit. I'll leave it powered up if you like and I'll show you it powering down. And before I forget, I'll take back the Goodman's camera thing. Because I went up forgetting that and leaving it. So it's still powered up. And this is what the dash I'm not, I'm not going to open the bonnet up while it's got while it's powered up because there's high voltages in this one because this is a hybrid electric and the voltages could be in the hundreds or even the thousands of volts that's what the red cables were that you saw earlier in the video so I'm not prepared to open it up at the moment like that at this stage uh, you wouldn't hear anything anyway because the actual petrol combustion engine isn't running but the electric motor's primed and ready to go so when it's been put into gear it will just start Put and drive to the wheels. Now the gauges, that's yeah, it took me a bit to figure out where the thing was. That's the petrol gauge there for the petrol engine. So there's tons of petrol in it. Uh, R for red it's got there, I uh, presume. This here's sitting red, I don't know really what that means, but batteries half charged. I guess that'll be the batteries just out. So it's really just working on regenerator of perhaps. I didn't get a long run. I did get the motorway up to up to the national speed limit very quickly. And it got there very smoothly and quickly. I floored it just just to feel the acceleration, that was all. Uh, I got up to the speed limit and um, it was really smooth. We, if, we get, if we go beyond that speed limit, no bother. But you, don't, you dare not do that. If you're going to do that, you do it with your own car on the racetrack. But uh, it would be quite nippy and sure. I mean, probably, I don't know what the top speed is, but mine's is a 1.8 TSI, and that's hand booked at 139 mile an hour. So I don't really, I'm going to have to look what the horsepower is for this, but it's probably, I'll be no far off it anyway. So let's see it powering down then. So there's not really much to show, but I'll show you anyway. Just press that, and then there you go. It just does all this fancy stuff. Distance covered, 10 miles, please check safe. Oh, that's just the usual. Goodbye. Vehicle charges immediately when connected to the mains. Maximum charging point. No, I never figured out how to get the... Oh, there it is. There it is. Remember, I was trying to find out how to get the petrol thingy open at the back. You would just... That's the button there. I don't know how to show you it, but... 
I can probably show you it. Might as well. Ah, uh, maybe you can't because or can I? No, you need the ignition. Well, that went. I had the door shut. That was lit up. But when I just opened the door, it all went off. So maybe you need to have the ignition or to have it pulling up before you could open up the, you know, the cap for the fuel, the little flap at the side of the car for the, to get access for the fuel tank to top it up. On the other one, you just pressed it and it opened, just like that for the charger point on the side of the car for the charging up the battery. So you could run on pure battery electric for a while until that goes down. I couldn't have really looked at all that when I was I didn't, I've not looked at all this. There's a blooming big menu there and everything. It could be there for about a year figuring it. You could be there for a wee while. You have to spend time to actually, you know, get familiar with all the, the engine out and share this handbook here. I'll go through all the details and that. Um, again, it's standard on this manual one. I've not got time. To do that, maybe I'll do a comprehensive video on that at another stage. Uh, anyway, I did show you that, didn't I? That's the glove compartment. It'll be air conditioned, I'm sure there'll be air con and everything in there and all the usual. Uh, lovely stereo and radio and all that. Um, right, let's get this back. Uh, let's get the keys back to the uh, back to Alan. It's, um, oh, it's, uh, just before I get all this, it's um, I just want to stay in it. <laughs> Happy with that. Oh, something actually, when I did press that button when the door was shut, it did actually autom open automatically. And that's what it's like. It's beeping away because the door's open. So, and it's maybe because it's, it just wants to be uh, closed. So I'll let you hear it closing. I should get a picture of that. It's quite nice before we do that. It's got a wee bit of the dials here. Right, that beeping's getting on me. Right, so the beeping's going off. Car's back in one bit. Back with its right fall. When there's tons of case you get a bus in there. I just when I heard the beeps, it was fair in case I didn't want to pry it. <laughs> so that's a back in its uh, parking space for the uh, next demonstration. Right. Right, so it's a uh, Thomas and Potter Skoda dealer on the Edinburgh Road in Perth, Perth City, city of the Scottish city of Perth. Picture of that as well. And the Peterhead prison that I was talking about earlier is just right across the road from it. I'll do the separate video or whatever. If I was talking about the prison, I could do that differently, different video, but right, let's get the keys back, handed back in. Inside the actual dealer. It's closed now, it's just closed a minute ago. I uh, got a bag just in the nick of time before it closed. I was just um locking up the car and I'm gonna give him a link to the channel so you could see the video as well. Get some get more viewers there. So this is the Perth Scooter dealer. The video too much in here because there is copyright music, unfortunately, but uh, I just have to very show you that. So that was like a 4x4 four four version. Um, I've not covered these models, I'm not familiar with them. I don't really think I would go for that anyway, I'd stick with the Octavia. So that was good, I was just um, thanking Alan for, for that. Um, I'm wanting to do a review of the Mark III and Mark III uh, Skoda Octavia as well. I got one, so he said I could you know, just let them know and I could probably do that as well. Oh, I'd love to do that. But uh, I'll show you the contrast between them. In fact, I'll show you the Mark. I don't know if that's a customer's car or what. I don't know. I'm not going to highlight too much of it, but I'll just give you an idea. This is my car. I'll show you that. No bother. So the Mark, Mark IIA. Uh, so the Mark IIA looks like this in contrast to the latest one that, that I was just reviewing. So let's just say it's a rough, the rough idea, it's got this, it shares the same thought process, it's a, the same family of cars as you could quite clearly see. And I've got stuff on the inside I don't really want to. So the, it's a spacious inside at the back. The boot's massive. We'll give you a rough idea of the engine sizes. The, the engine cover 
The engine bonnet's at the opposite side to get in, I'll show you that. On the later one, it's in the passenger side, but on the earlier one, it's on the driver's side, the off side. Oh, God, this is great, is it? It does it all the time, by the way, don't worry about that. Because it's on camera, in the way. Alright, okay, fine, I'll pause it, I'll just... Okay, doesn't want to open, so I'll look into that later. Probably jealous because I'm doing a review on other cars, but never mind. I'll show you very briefly of the Mark III. This is the Mark III non-facelift one, but I'm not going into any details because it could be a private car. I'll just flash the camera over it very quickly. The blue one. I don't know who owns it or what, but that's a Mark III. And it's the Mark III facelift one has the split headlights on the front. The Mark I, there's not many of them left on the road. But, uh, that's that. Anyway, I can't get the bonnet open on this, it's just been a... So I'll get that sorted at another point, but like, besides that, it's been a good day. Um, hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, just see what else I put on my channel. Right, catch you later on. I got back home, no problems at all. This is much later on. Uh, I've had my teeth off. Had a wee look at it. It's the uh, the bonnet on my car. I couldn't go home because the handle came off. It's been a known problem for quite a while. So uh, I took the inner panel, interior uh, sill panels, pulled them back a bit, had a look at the mechanism, uh, pushed the handle on with the panel bit off, and I got a better contact with it. And just at my lock up at the moment, um, and. Uh, Got the bonnet open so i'll continue on what i was going to do is show you when i was at the perth dealer i was going to show you the interior the engine compartment of my car to compare it with the uh, mark 4 so mine's been the mark 2a and the one that i test over is a mark 4 so i'll go and compare that and show you the um, difference this is on a different file it's much later on so i'll just have to show you very briefly so this is the Mark 2A engine bay. It's, mine's is the 1.8 TSI. And you can see it follows a very similar theme to it. So the induction's at the front, goes through the air turbo at the back, comes out the turbo, through the intercooler. On this one it's an air-to-air -air intercooler, so the air comes in from the front, cools the charger down, um, then it goes into the throttle body, variable valve throttle body, a uh, variable track throttle body, and then into the engine, um, and then it gets burnt in the combustion process. And this being uh, just a petrol engine, this isn't a hybrid, this is just petrol. That orange, by the way, is just the markers to let you know where to position the old fashioned uh, stay for the, the old fashioned design now, of course, because um, they've all got the later ones with struts. But this is the old one where you just move it, you know, you tuck it up there, and when it's come to open the bonnet, you just Highlighted it. So it just happens to be the same colour as the high voltage cables that were on uh, the hybrid uh, car for the high voltage circuits for the hybrid um, section of the uh, drive power line. Um, but this, as I say, this is just a petrol 1.8 TSI turbo. Um, there's no hybrid stuff in this, but the plat the actual platform, the under bonnet, is this very similar theme. Air air and filter, air filters here. Battery, which is just under a plastic cover, and relay switches, fuses, relays under there. Engine sits transverse, trans, six speed manual transmission underneath, front wheel drive. Um, the inlet is on this side, outlets on the firewall side, or the towards the back. It's the firewall, the bulkhead. Um, expansion tank for the coolant system, screen washers here. Whereas on the Mark 4s it was tucked there. 
uh, charcoal canister, your oil filter and all that. Uh, oh, and the air, and air compressor, air conditioner compressor down at the bottom there. And you've got the throttle body on the front. So that's just to give you a rough idea, well, just to, so you could compare the um, the under bonnet views of the, uh, compare it between the Mark IIA facelift 2009-2013 models of Skoda Octavia with the 2021, sorry, the 2022 car that I test driven earlier on today. Okay, so I hope you find that interesting. So I'm just going to have to put the, I'll show you the panels I had to take off, by the way, just to give you an idea of where the bonnet release mechanism is. They're in the most awkward positions as always, because it's right under the dashboard, and you've got to be good at blooming gymnastics and to be fit to get in all these places. Or to get in, very awkward, because I'm not really... No, it's, I've, I find it difficult and not small. I find it hard to get in tight places. I, I find it stiff. I'm not as young as it used to be, so it's very awkward for me to get into these places. But I had to. That's the mechanism there. It's not very clear to show. I can't really zoom in much clearer than that, unfortunately. But the bonnet cable comes down from the bulkhead and into this bit here. That bit turns down with the so called handle that's the splines are probably worn on it. And it's just not getting a good grip and it's causing it to just slip come off. But it's got to pull, when you pull the handle or tug the handle, it's pushing that bit down there. It releases the cable. You can maybe just see the cable if I zoom in. The cable end is there. And that pulls the mechanism further up the towards the front of the car to release the bonnet latch. That's just a rough idea anyway. Okay. It's really difficult working on cars. I just give them to the, the garage to do the work. I like learning how they work, but it's too awkward. <sighs> anyway, I've got that. I know what's wrong yet. So I just wanted to update you on that as well. So, the Skoda TV view, I hope you enjoyed. <laughs> Don't be put off, by the way, by that, because it's just, uh, it could happen to any car, not just the uh, Octavia's. I mean, it's been known for that, but it's the plastic handle. Um, you could get that fairly, relatively cheap. They've probably highlighted it. I've revised that on the later ones, you know. But that's an older, I bear in mind, that's a 12 year old car. So, um, these things happen. But it just annoyed me earlier because it was happened when I was filming, of all things. So I kind of got pissed off with that. I did, I've got to get that, oh, to get that bottle open to get the coolant checked and uh, lubricant oil checked and all the rest of it. Right, I'm going on too much. Uh, right, hope you enjoyed that. See what else I put on and um, I'll put some facts and figures on if I remember when I compile it with the brake horsepowers and everything regarding the 1.4 hybrid uh, Mark IV Scud Octavia uh, 4th generation model. I'll try and remember to put some figures up on the screen at the start or something so you get an idea. I was second hand, I was going for 26,000 as well, so brand new it'd probably be well, vary between twenty five to 40,000, depending on the spec, the level, etc. You'd have to go online or go and get the actual specific spec that you want. And for that one, it was uh, quite, high, quite high spec. So, um, right, I'll catch you later. Okay, bye for now. Bye.